All right, we're now live and today I have a really interesting talk. I promised it a while ago and it's been a while and I've been trying to um, bring that talk on. It's on Ayurveda and weight loss. Now, that's a little bit controversial of a subject when it comes to comparing or um, talking about Ayurveda from a Western perspective or from a vegan perspective. It doesn't quite work with either one. So it's a little bit of a controversial subject, but it's super, super cool. Like, stick around, it's a really cool lecture and really cool information. Now, I did post the entire lecture or the entire article on my website. It's in the links to this video below, the first link. Um, it's on my blog, basically, alikamenova.com. The latest thing that I posted on the blog is Ayurveda and weight loss. So everything that I will talk about, it's written there. And we'll just cover the Ayurvedic perspective on weight loss and why it is important and how it can help you. I'll try to get through this somewhat quickly. So this is going to be somewhat of a short video. I want to make it packed <laughs> with information and let's get started um, so i translated it actually uh, uh actually uh, so let me <laughs> back up a little bit this is um a diploma work of one of my students who wrote this in russian i plugged this um in google Tra in google translator so i translated it i polished off some of the really parts where you couldn't understand it i compared it to the original text and i translated them because it it was that worth it and now it's on my website let's get started um, um, for those of you that are clicking now the article you can see it on my website and look at my creative background so um, what are the um, Ayurvedic methods for creating a slim figure that's a little bit of the translator but I like it slim figure rather than a toned or thin or whatever um, that's kind of how Google Translator liked it to be. Um, in Ayurveda, it is believed that it's better to be thin than to be overweight because often it is easier to increase your body weight rather than to decrease it once you're already overweight. And um, the reason why it is better to um, have a normal body weight um, is because if you are overweight, you create ama. Ama is the accumulation of toxins in the body it is a, a ayurvedic concept ama and um, when you're overweight there is more accum accumulation of toxins and the body is actually struggling with the removal of toxins which can lead to a bunch of other problems so a heavy body would create more ama naturally another important aspect uh, is the imp uh, is uh, not the impact of um, the fatty tissue on the outside, on the appearance of the person, but rather the uh, uh, location of the fatty uh, tissue. The fatty tissue is uh, positioned in the adipose tissues around the organs and therefore impacting the internal health of the organs. Um, this means that the uh, vital organs like heart, kidney, liver are trapped in fat, which increases the burden of their work. So the organs are having trouble working. So it creates a kind of... Um, um, Catch-22, uh, oh boy, it kind of creates a catch-22 because um, once you're already, um, once you're already fat or have uh, fatty tissues, dharma stops you from losing it, so it's, it's a little bit of a, of a process. Anyways, Another aspect we already covered, it creates adi um, the adipose tissues, deposits around the organs. Now, from Google Translate, I want to tell you what adipose tissue is. The, um, all right, so one second here. This means that vital organs like heart, liver, and kidneys are trapped in fat, which increases the burden of their work. Body fat, or simply fat, is a loose connective tissue composed mostly of adipocytes. That is from Google Translate. Um, in addition to adipocytes, adipose tissue containing the um, stromal vascular fraction of cells, including 
spray adipocytes, fibroblasts, vascular endothelial cells, and a variety of immune cells such as the adipose tissue, macrophages. Anyway, so um, here I butchered a few words, but that's but that's okay. I'm just bringing um, the scientific explanation of adipose tissue. Adipose tissue is derived from preadipocytes. Its main role is to store energy in the form of lipids, although it also cushions the, um, and insulates the body. So it has a, a very good purpose. That's why it's in the body, because it's already uh, something important to us. Far from being hormonally inert, which is, that's what's so interesting. Um, don't distract me, guys. Uh, far from being um, hormonally inert, because uh, previously uh, people used to think that the fatty, the adipose tissues was hormonally inert. No, it is not. It's actually playing a very important role in your hormonal health. Meaning the tissue that accumulates around your organs, it plays uh, a very important role in your overall hormonal health. It's not inert and just there kind of like, it, it, it doesn't have just an impact on your appearance basically. Adipose tissue has, in recent years, been recognized as a major endocrine organ, which is super important because it basically creates hormones in your body because it's an endocrine organ, like the glands. And um, it produces hormones such as leptin, which is very important, estrogen, resistin, uh, and TNFA. The two types of adipose tissues, adipose tissues are, you've heard that, white and brown fatty cells or um, adipose tissue cells. And uh, um, the, the brown ones generate body um, heat and the white ones store energy in the form of fat. Um, Visceral fat or abdominal fat, also known as organ fat or intra-abdominal fat, is located inside the abdominal cavity, packed between the organs, stomach, liver, intestines, kidneys. Visceral fat is different from subcutaneous fat underneath the skin and intramuscular fat. Um, fat in the lower body as uh, thighs and buttocks uh, is subcutaneous and is not consistently spaced tissue whereas fat in the abdomen is mostly visceral and semi-fluid so uh, we're talking about the fat in the abdomen that's the problem men are more likely to have abdominal fat than women and women post after menopause are uh, also very likely to start having visceral fat because of hormones and the thing that is proven to work really well on visceral fat is you wouldn't believe it, but it's high, um, high intensity interval training and yoga and interval yoga. So basically there is something you can do about it to help your body function in a proper way and for you to uh, balance your hormones. Balancing the hormones leads to everything. It's a... Um, it's a uh, basically trickles down effect on everything and once you balance your hormones. High intensity exercise is one of the uh, ways to effectively reduce the total abdominal fat. One study suggests that at least uh, 10 hours per week of aerobic exercise is required for visceral fat reduction, but with interval training you can reduce the amount of that. Um, so. Um, one of the problems, going back to the article, this was just an uh, explanation of fat. One of the problems um, with um, extra uh, with extra fat accumulation is the body is uh, less agile, which uh, affects basically um, when your body is less agile, that affects your um, capacity to exercise. Um, Ayurveda maintains that illness arises when there is no harmony between men and the whole, like the universe. Uh, so I like that, that it actually Ayurveda, that's some of the aspects of Ayurveda uh, that I like are more of the more ancient sites of Ayurveda. I think most of Ayurveda is lost and most of what uh, now is circulated in the books is kind of misunderstandings and just um, kind of uh, simplified Ayurveda where they're, they just divide people in a few simple types and all of a sudden they find remedies for which and on top of it a lot of the remedies are overcooked foods 
and a lot of milk. I think that is a cultural um, consequence um, to how Ayurveda evolved and how it became so... Um, it, uh, how uh, how the knowledge that trickled down to us uh, became kind of corrupted. Um, so um, when um, illness arises, when the harmony between um, the human and the universe is disrupted, that's basically the bottom line in general with health. It's not just with Ayurveda or fat accumulation or it's just in general when we lose our balance or our connectivity to the whole, um, that's when we start our health, um, mental, emotional and physical health can be impacted negatively, of course, if, when there is disruption. Uh, disrupting the natural rhythms of life, people um, include it in dissonance with the natural law. Basically, when there is dissonance with the natural law, um, that causes premature uh, aging and hormonal uh, health. And no one looks perfect. <laughs> just no one ever looks perfect. Uh, we all just... We all just do as much as we can, basically. Therefore, the in order to, to find peace. Therefore, the basics of maintaining an ideal health is living in harmony with the rhythms of nature. Yeah, we have to live in harmony with the rhythms of nature. When this occurs, the body itself sparks powerful processes of, of rejuvenation. Yeah, so we also, through life, we go through processes of rejuvenation. And um, I'm reading from my computer. Uh, we go through processes of uh, rejuvenation and those processes usually are um, even menopause is the process of rejuvenation, puberty, uh, pregnancy, giving birth and those times are very important in a human life because you're given the opportunity to um, refresh your entire health and um, to reapproach. It's a, it's a process of mental physical and spiritual rebirth physically not um physically uh it's a metaphor because the body rejuvenates the cells rejuvenate and the organs rejuvenate so basically that is the part of ayurveda that i like it emphasizes the holistic aspect of it it emphasizes the holistic aspect of health and just um, looking at health from a holistic perspective, uh, man as a part of the universe, not man as a just an isolated organism, because we operate within the universe, of course. So Ayurveda gives you practical advice of the um, basically uh, the different uh, rhythms in uh, and seasons and within the day the different rhythms of the day so that one or a person can uh, adjust their lifestyle according to their um to that um the maintenance of health and cure of disease is based on the idea of balance between three bodily constitutions there's the three uh, doshas vata pitta and kapha pitta is the predominant fire vata air and ether and kapha is water and earth. And when you balance, uh, you uh, basically uh, determine which type you are and then you apply remedies and do those remedies at particular times of the day in order to, um, to uh, basically work with the cycles in nature. And the one thing in Ayurveda I would caution everybody about is to uh, just take blindly what they recommend and go into all those overcooked meals that make everybody very sluggish. So what I do typically is either look for ancient sources, uh, which are really, really, really hard to find. And because Ayurveda in general has been lost due to um, India being under the British Empire and they practice allopathic medicine. So Ayurveda has been completely lost. And um, Therefore, um, therefore, it's really hard to find um, really good information and reputable information on Ayurveda. It's mostly the, the basic stuff that 
I've studied it and I would not be too attached to Ayurveda, but I would take the wisdom that is here and there in it and apply it to um, modern studies and to an ethical lifestyle. So that's that's the point I'm trying to make here. <laughs> Bring ethics into it because as, um, as a mother, um, it, when one becomes a breastfeeding mother, you have to come in, uh, put in a perspective um, what it takes for people to actually acquire the milk of a mammal, of a big mammal. It generally um, acquires the separation of the mother and the child and also the killing of the uh, male offsprings. So it's really unethical uh, from Ayurveda perspective to drink that much milk. And what is very interesting in most, tradi most traditions, including Ayurveda, even in Chinese Buddhism, uh, the sages, the priests were vegan, but they just did not recommend that for the general population because it was not feasible. And uh, they practice a compassionate diet and they just, for the masses, did not recommend it because they figured it's not going to work anyways. Um, but now times are changing and we're changing with the times. Um, in contrast to the modern medicine, Ayurveda uses a holistic approach to treatment, not focusing on individual symptoms. In other words, bringing the whole body into balance and harmony, a natural way to get rid of disease, creating the imbalance in the body. Uh, but this applies not only um, to disease, but also, for example, to excess weight. So you use Ayurveda basically to balance your uh, weight and life and health out. Um, using simple principles in Ayurveda, and we'll co cover the uh, principles. Uh, now, uh, most of you probably have done um, a little test and know their type, know their Ayurvedic type. Usually you're a combination of all three types, but in different variation. You're always everything. That's the point, even in astrology. You're always everything um, in different uh, percentages. Basically, we contain the entire universe within us. And uh, the problem of excess weight cannot be decided by some one, uh, by one universal way uh, of addressing it. Every person has to have a customizable solution. Uh, it gets a little tricky when you believe that we're all very, very different because that's when people start thinking things are very complicated, very complex, and they need to go to someone to tell them how to live their life. Um, imagine a zebra not being sure what she has to eat and wondering if she has to kill a lion or if she should... Um, maybe eat like a goat or maybe imagine the complexity if a zebra wasn't sure about it now humans uh, for the most part we require the same macronutrients in order to thrive we can survive very well on all kinds of diets because we're very adaptable and we've been through a lot of famines but in general in order for us to thrive um, Someone has to block someone, yes. <laughs> In German, no. Um, anyways, so, uh, I don't know. I haven't blocked anybody. Um, but if you guys see... Uh, nasty comments because the live sessions uh, tend to attract audience that I don't typically have or ever have, you can report them. Um, the problem of excess uh, weight, yeah, is addressed as a holistic problem. Uh, so when we're trying to lose weight, we have to holistically look at the body and see what is causing it. It's usually a combination of factors. It's never, when someone is trying to lose weight, it's never just um, you eat too much. It's never just that. I wish it was that simple, just exercise more and eat less, but it's never that. It's always, the human is a complex organism and um, there is a simple in its base approach, but very complex in how it works uh, or very complex when you go to apply it. According to Ayurveda, um, Yeah, fat is a lubricant of the muscles and the tendons, but when it is in excess, it may, uh, it may lead to uh, increased kapha, which kapha can in increase, get this attachment grade. Um, attachment and grade, basically those are the... Uh, 
the psychological aspects of increased kapha, increased attachment and greed. Uh, an important rule for a person seeking to restore a healthy metabolism should be the ability to choose the most suitable diet for each day, uh, which will prevent the accumulation of ama. Uh, I said ama in the beginning, ama is toxins in the body, and uh, when we live according to the cycles in nature, we accumulate less toxins. Um, you should also drink plenty of clean water. So one of the best ways to lose weight and to uh, balance yourself out and to balance your health and to improve your health is to drink a lot of water. Pure water, as pure as possible. Um, basically, um, let's see, I think the mailman might be coming. Uh, uh, pure um that if uh, basically 80% of people that have health issues, if they just increase the amount of water they're drinking, they're uh, going to have no health issues. So they don't even need to go to a doctor. They basically um, can just do that one simple thing because most people are dehydrated and they're not drinking enough water. And that would solve 80% of the people that think they have massive health issues. That will solve their problems. So that's the first thing you can always do. Water is amazing because it hydrates you, but it also removes toxins from your body. It gives you energy. It helps with clarity. It's amazing. Basically, drink more water and pure water. Definitely not tap water because tap water in most all places contains some um, chlorine, fluoride. Fluoride not in most places, in just big cities. Um, heavy metals and then just um, small amounts of pharmaceuticals and... Uh, and such so uh pesticides um and so forth so increase the amount of water that you're drinking because it can also help you drain your lymph fluid and help you with the um, digestive system to eliminate toxins um, when the body is dry more mucus is produced and that leads um, to the disruption of the normal microflora flora and the reproduction of bad bacteria. So when you are having, um, when your body is in, in a dehydrated state, you're having uh, basically uh, imbalance of microflora and a lot of toxins. So your first line of defense, and that's just not Ayurveda, I, it, that applies uh, for everything else is just an increasing of hydration uh, to improve agni which agni is the digestive fire in ayurveda they widely use spices which greatly increase the ability of the body to assimilate foods um, if you uh, guys just joined in i have this article posted on my website uh, it's a diploma work and it's really interesting plus i added some things to it some um some base, some text on what is the visceral fat and so forth. Um, so now Ayurveda is really big on biological times throughout the day for when to eat and for the different types. So they uh, uh, in each four hour segments of the day, um, each four hour segment is ruled by a different dosha and according to your uh, personal dosha, you can adjust your eating times so that you know that your digestive fire is strong. If your digestive fire is strong, then you produce less ama. If your digestive fire is weak, you produce a lot of toxins um, because you're not able to digest your food. Now they say from 6 to 9 a.m. is kapha time. From 10 to 14 is pitta. From 14 to 18, that's 2 to 6, is vata. Then from 6 to 10 in the evening is kapha. And from 22, which is 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. is pitta, and from 2 to 6 is vata. So if you're, uh, let's say, kapha, you choose the pitta times to eat so that you have more digestive fire and you're better able to uh, digest your food, which, uh, which can help you um, digest your food and not create um, toxins ama, in the body. So, for example, from 6 to 10 a.m., uh, you can eat sweets because that's when they will be digested the best. The sweet taste reflects the elements of earth and water. It, it is these elements that characterize kapha. Earth and water characterizes uh, kapha. 
which is active at that time. So when a kafa is active, they recommend that you eat and uh, sweets can be digested very well uh, during those times. According in, um, accordingly, in this case, the body will not accumulate the extra slime since the digestive fire is weak. Um, uh, since the digestive fire of kafa is weak, uh, a small breakfast is recommended. People with, physiolo uh, with physiology of kafa um, uh, they generally suffer with excess weight and obesity, swelling and slow metabolism. So it is best to eat small breakfast or skip it altogether. So now we come to intermittent fasting. If you're kapha, it's good to skip one meal a day so that you give your body the capacity to build digestive fire. Because if you're constantly feeding your body, you're never um, eliminating properly. You're accumulating more and more ama, which leads to even slower uh, metabolism. So in order to adjust this, you just move the way, uh, you move your meals around the day and you adjust what you're eating, of course. If things are very sluggish, they're going to make you even more sluggish. And, uh, and a lot of people, I think, in our world are kapha because a lot of people are just kind of slow and overweight. Um, I don't know what the percentage of kapha is. Um, um, not high in my interval yoga community for sure. <laughs> That's a lot of vata pita uh, people here, although I think I'm a strong kapha, pita kapha. Um, in the afternoon and in the midst of activity, pita and digestive fire must be primary, uh, a, a primary meal. So uh, Ayurveda recommends that you eat your biggest meal of the day during uh, lunch, uh, during noon, uh, because uh, your digestive fire is really strong and um, basically you will be able to quickly digest your food, which will not lead to accumulation of extra fat. Uh, at night, it's best to be avoided heavy meals because they will not get digested and they will accumulate as ama. Toxins. Um, obesity is associated with the weakening or slowing of the metabolism, often accompanied by weakness of digestive fire. Um, then if you have a very fast metabolism, you're vata, and we're coming to vata right now. Uh, in the afternoon and in the middle of activity, pita and the digestive fire must be primary meal. Okay. Um, in the evening activity time, vata is better to uh, eat. In the evening, just eat basically easy to digest foods, raw foods, and you'll be fine. Raw foods should digest totally fine in the evening. I eat mostly dinner and in the evening and I make sure that I eat light foods. Yeah, and definitely no starches, grains and such. Those those are disasters in the evening, they're for lunch. At night, heavy foods is uh, by far the worst. And it's, uh, Ayurveda considers this, and I like how strongly opinionated Ayurveda is, but at night, eating uh, heavy foods is poisoning the body. I agree. Um, it just rot, uh, rots in the gut and poisons the body. That is very true. Uh, obesity is, asso is associated with weakening or uh, slowing of the metabolism, often accompanied by weakness of the digestive fire. That's why they uh, so much emphasize the digestive fire. Uh, periods of special activity. You're welcome. Um, was there another question? Yeah, plastic is absolutely terrible, not for men, only for men. It's terrible for women as well. Definitely, if you can help it, never drink from plastic. It totally throws your whole hormonal system out and I use, I use a Berkey filter, uh, use filtered water, if you have to uh, glass water I have just purchased um, stainless steel containers because they're very light and you can carry them around. Um, in stainless steel it kind of it doesn't flavor the water and it's safe for you uh, and it's as light as plastic so that's your best bet if you have to take it with you, basically the, the clean canteen type of bottles. Uh, definitely plastic avoid it because it really can disrupt your hormonal system because it exoestrogens, uh, exo so it mimics the estrogen in your body and it can lower your testosterone and lead to um, just a cascade of effects on your hormonal system. Obesity is associated with weakening or slowing of the metabolism or, um, and the digestive fire is weakened. Per periods of special activity of the digestive fire in the stomach. Um, 
So basically intermittent fasting if you have a very, very, very slow metabolism in order to speed it up. The opposite of what everybody tells you, small meals through the day um, to keep your metabolism going, that is stupid because it's, okay, that is ridiculous because your metabolism is not going to slow down uh, from um, taking a break. You will actually build a justifier and be able to boost your metabolism when you have a big meal as actually we probably historically have been eating big meals in the afternoon um quite a lot we weren't probably just grazing all day long uh, and grazing all day long just never allows the body to rest never allows your digestive system to rest and doesn't allow you to um clean your body properly so you're never really in a detox mode, cleaning the lymphatic system mode. And I think I've seen people for who small meals throughout the day works. I think those are people that are extremely disciplined and they can eat half a sandwich for dinner. And that's okay. I have seen it work for people. But most people are not this disciplined uh, and you don't need to take a bad eating system and apply massive discipline in order to just maintain okay uh, health what you can do is actually follow a more natural to the human body cycle where you take intervals between meals so you allow your body to do the sweeping and repairing work because as in there was a saying in music the silence between notes is more important it's what makes music same goes for the body the time between eating is more important than when you eat because if you're constantly eating you know that's terrible you're no longer nourishing your system um, and on, on top of it, intermittent fasting, I have a video on it, leads to balancing the hormonal system. Morning 7 to 9 uh, is moderate heat uh, in the digestive system. Uh, noon 10 to uh, 1 p.m. is the most active fire, that's when you're supposed to eat. 3.30 to um, 4.30 p.m. is low heat less active fire and five to nine is moderate heat so the uh, most active fire for your body is at noon so most people do benefit from a, a, a big lunch um, we should also pay attention to the effects associated with certain tastes according to Ayurveda the bitter taste improves metabolism so if you're a kapha basically you're kind of more sluggish you have more mucus uh, you, you tend to put on weight very easily uh, so that would mean that you have a predominant kapha type that means that you do need and I agree with this you need uh, from Ayurveda there's certain aspects of Ayurveda that I have applied all my life but not the overcooked dairy aspect that's just ridiculous it's it's I I spoke about it earlier but it's just troublesome advice uh, but if you're kapha bitter you, you need more the bitter taste in your life what is bitter it's not just dandelions but all the greens um romaine is bitter um certain spices are bitter so you need more bitter um taste and that will boost that will spark up your metabolism you also need a little bit of spicy food spicy food also helps with um uh, spicy food also helps with um boosting your um, digestifier of course um, so the bitter will also uh, help you detox better so you're gonna be building less ama which is a big the big issue with kapha but with all people and obviously that should apply for everybody uh, no sweets um, no refined sweet that means and no sweet fruits uh, according to Ayurveda if you ask me sweet fruits are fine dried fruits are not so no dry fruits, but sweet fruits are totally perfectly fine. Uh, if you guys have questions, post them and I will look through them. Um, uh, ch well, chicken will disrupt, no matter what meat in general is hard for the human to digest. And it will disrupt your uh, hormonal system. There is actually a lot of studies on top of it. Chicken is like, hang I think Dr. Gregor was giving the analogy that bringing raw chicken uh, meat into your home is like 
bringing it a hand grenade and hoping it's not gonna go off because of um, contamination it's really really dangerous in a human kitchen to have raw chicken so that kind of tells you something why would the food be so dangerous to have in your house I would I would avoid it as much as I can and go plant-based because it has million proven benefits and um, it will make you feel better of course it's also chicken also has a problem with being too high in protein and protein is probably one of the worst things you can have a high in diet uh, did you say uh, breastfeeding and spicy food I think it's awesome I think breastfeeding during um, uh, eating spicy food during breastfeeding is amazing because it will create a versatile palate for your child um, I followed my cravings during pregnancy and breastfeeding and I did crave a lot of spicy food like uh, like hot peppers uh, and I noticed that it helps a lot with um, it just basically makes your digestion really strong uh, obviously you don't have to overdo it but uh, you know if you if you're balanced if you feel that it's serving you well it's good because it trickles into the milk and the baby tastes it so when she starts or he starts eating food she's gonna have that versatile palate, uh, which I think is a good thing. You don't want people that are just wanting to eat fried food, which is what happened in America in American culture. People that have grown up eating burgers, they just can't appreciate saffron rice, or they just can't appreciate something that they're not used to. It has to be bland, fried, and salty, and that's the flavors they've grown up to appreciate. I think when we start appreciating bitter and sour and all of those, and that that happens in babyhood. Once you've been fed some food in your childhood, um, woohoo, someone, someone donated. Thank you, Amy. Um, when you have uh, been fed a certain diet in your childhood, it's, it's, it's in your cellular memory, it's in your cellular tissue. So it's very difficult to, to change that, to change that behavior. So if the mother eats a very versatile, rich in different plants foods and then the baby when the baby starts eating you do the same you just integrate the same foods that you were eating you yourself during the pregnancy um it's awesome also another thing is um your cravings during pregnancy will tell you what your baby's cravings will be uh, what her particularities will be so it's kind of nice because your intuition is on fire whatever you're craving you're craving it for a reason just make sure it's not donuts and and anything that's a whole food it's a legitimate craving um, so uh, I will kind of finish the article I mean I will finish it but I will gloss over and I love doing classes I'm a little bit uncertain about other subjects but thank you and I will try to do some other subjects here and there just because they are fun and they can be helpful um, all right, so we should also pay attention to the uh, effects associated with certain tastes. Um, yeah, so kava should uh, should avoid dried fruit and overly sweet things, which is just processed sweets. Uh, and if they eat sweet, it should be the, in the earlier part of the day. Um, and they should include the bitter taste, and which is leafy uh, vegetables which will help you cleanse your liver and that's the uh, basically the organ that kapha is challenged with the liver is usually sluggish pungent taste uh, also speeds the metabolism and the digestion so kapha people who are overweight kapha and overweight they can benefit from spicy because it will boost your metabolism spice fire look at hot peppers i mean they're the absolute manifestation of mars energy of fire um when you look at the food, you can tell what it is gonna do for your mind because the consciousness of the food is in the shape and the color of the food because everything is a vibration and energy, everything in the universe. And things, depending baby is waking up, and things form in, uh, things form um, their shape and form. Um, a core, oh, she stopped. Things, um, Things form their shapes according to the vibration that is the spark of their creation. So that's why, um, for example, walnuts are good for your brain because they they vibrate on the same frequency. Because 
the frequency created how they look and their energy all right i will have to go get baby and i'll come back with her and i'll see did i interrupt it no and and we'll see hold on and we'll see um how much more we can go for Let's see how far we can go. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> it's my pleasure, really. So if you're a Vata, that's what, uh, that's what one of you asked. If you're a Vata, you ha you're actually a very high metabolism. We're getting to Vata. If you're a Vata constitution, it is likely that you will need to follow a diet to balance your dosha, obviously, because something is out of balance. Don't mess with Sophie. Baby is messing with Sophie. Um, the basic taste that helps Vata uh, is sweet, sour, and salty. Those are the the taste. But when you say salty, don't, don't think so sodium, uh, like uh, table salt, think celery, think tomatoes, tomatoes are salty, peppers, peppers are very salty, and the way I know this is because I often, um, yeah, okay, okay, I often avoid salt, I don't eat any salt, and when I avoid salt, I can taste what is very salty, like for example, if you, um, the beet tops, if you cook them, uh, and if you cook chard, they're overly salty they're super salty if you cook chard and beet tops by themselves you steam them they're so salty and that's salt that is very easily absorbable in the body and it can benefit your kidneys rather than the salt that is um, i definitely love salty that's one of my um uh, one of uh, the things that i kind of have to put an effort in to avoid and Hopefully, baby is not going to stop the session. Um, I definitely um, have to put an effort in, but the benefits of avoiding salt are amazing. You, you just feel so good when you avoid salt salt. And even if you include a little bit, you just get most of your salt from... <laughs> you get most of your salt from, um, from uh, basically from vegetables that are high in um, organic sodium which is where we have to get our nutrients uh, we if we uh, we are uh, basically plants get the nutrients from rocks we can digest rocks so that's why uh, we get our minerals from plants not from rocks we don't digest rocks so that's why it's better not to eat rocks but to eat plants and they uh, they bring the, the elements so should we finish the vata um so for uh, I, I think I, I said for vata uh, sweet sour and salty that's what you need to um, focus on and for vata uh, not to uh, get stressed out on weight loss because if you get stressed on weight loss that's the problem with vata vata usually if vata gains weight it is because they're out of balance if they're out of balance that means that they're stressing because that's their main uh, issue so even if you have to lose weight just don't get stressed out because that will lead to um that will lead to, to even more disruptance of vata. Um, the next one is pitta. I have the article, if you now you are tuning in, uh, I have this article on my website, so you can gloss it over. It's a translation from a Russian diploma work. It's really cool. I uh, included certain things from um, certain additions to the article, but it's really interesting and it's summarizing a Ayurveda and how Ayurveda can help you. And I already kind of covered, if you know you're tuning in, how I take Ayurveda in, um, and how I take it into or into a vegan or a um, raw diet because they don't, uh, um, they don't um, recommend that in the mainstream Ayurveda because Ayurveda is watered down through the ages to fit the common man. It's, 
it, it's not it's in it's not in its purity and it's really difficult when you start digging for uh, ancient sources it's really difficult um all right um uh, Pita. Pita types should, let's see if I can put you somewhere else so that you're safe and they don't attack you. Um, and we'll finish. I figured that we'll just go as far as I can and open up the subjects. Uh, the, the subject. Pita is a sweet, bitter, and astringent, therefore spicy food are spicy foods are not su suitable for pita because it's already excess fire and usually okay and usually what makes uh, pita gain weight is just excessive appetite because the digestive fire is already uh, strong it should uh, they should avoid fiery um, activities sauna hot activities I am strong pita but because I eat a lot of plants I feel like I have balanced my pita I eat a lot of raw foods, I have balanced my pita and I love more than anything sauna and uh, hot springs. We are a ladybug today. All right, in conclusion, this is it. Um, I will have to... Um, Actually, we covered it, uh, most of it. Um, uh, so, for example, if you want to balance, uh, you should drink uh, a lot of hot water. This is a, a, a recommendation by Rubeda and my teacher. In general, it's really good to drink a lot of hot water. Um, and that can help with the elimination of AMA for all types and um, for the reduction of visceral fat, fat around the organs, high intensity interval tra training works very well. Interval yoga is designed for that because we manipulate the organs in the abdominal cavity by twists, forward bends and certain other poses plus Kapalabhati breath I've been including in the core challenge and with a lot of water, the addition of water, and yoga should, should really, really, really create a big difference, and then a little bit of dietary adjustment, and we are good to go. All right, I think I will wrap it up because baby and I are, we have important things to do. <laughs> right, mama? We have to clean the floors. And thank you uh, all for joining. I will just look if there is a question that I missed and yes it was really real <laughs> I figured that I might have time to do the video but I actually baby woke up a little early but that's okay we are going to dance now we've been dancing to it's your birthday 50 cents because <laughs> it's a bouncy song that babies love and I'll see you guys I have a posture challenge coming we're finishing the core challenge uh, on my website you can find the schedules for the core challenge it really changed my entire uh, stomach i i had a little a little softer belly before the challenge and now it's kind of looking like it just look before baby which i didn't expect and wasn't the goal but it's really really given me strength <laughs> and <laughs> oh just Yep, tell them. Take over, Lottie. What else? <laughs> She's a talker. Um, so, uh, the core challenge is ending and the posture challenge is starting. And weight loss challenge will be in January. Either weight loss, either weight loss or detox. 